How's it going everyone? So here we are in Miami for levels 11, 12, and 13. Now there was a lot on the line for this event with so many points on the line, so everyone was ready to race like their lives depended on it. Now with three events in three days and the last day being the largest drone racing event in history, we had a tight schedule. Straight from the bus we were taken in for the course walk and we all shared the same reaction when we stepped on the field. It was truly incredible and there was no doubt that this would be an event to remember. Welcome to Miami. Welcome to level 11, 12, and 13. Conclusion of the season. A lot of points here. Uh, really excited. This should be a really good course. Um, we'll just review the course real quick from here as a whole. Start podium, launch through the US Air Force Pentagate. Come around. You do have to go in front of this. I don't think there's a question anymore because we're going to place the gate. You do have to come in front of the mobile gate, up to the Vista gate. The Vista gate, it's called the Vista level. That's why it's called the Vista gate. Um, you have to go through this direction going away and you have to turn right and then you come back and you have to go through the bottom of the T-Mobile double stack and we're going to look at all the, obviously all the gates and the obstacles around next. Um, come through that and then you go through the uh, entrance to the flight deck maneuver and you have to go over the flight deck and then through the exit of the flight deck maneuver, this direction through the top and then you turn and we're gonna go in the free column zone. So you see there are two US Air Force banners. One is the entrance, one is the exit. So you'll see the banner, well lit, you go over the banner, you go away toward the glass, and then there's a red light behind it over the feed back, over the ROA, over the Air Force uh, area. So consider that four gates. And then you have to clear the triangle split F. So those uh, tubes, the orange tubes, you just have to go over them. There's two of them, it's a walkway come back down to the Google Cloud field gate. Oh. And that is angled. So, um, and then from the Google Cloud field gate, you'll come back to the Pentagate and that's the start, US Air Force Pentagate, and that's the start of lap two. At the end of lap two, you go through the US Air Force Pentagate and into the finish. So these blocks are there, okay? So we'll, again, we're gonna walk it all so you can see intimately where the obstacles are. Now, this was my first IRL event as the Algorand 13th pilot, so I learned quite a bit about how things work before the race airs. I was pleased to see that the pilots have the chance to voice their concerns about line obstructions, ask if certain lines are legal, and any other questions regarding safety or fairness. And they were doing all this while being blown away by the transformation Lone Depot Park has undergone and the sheer size of this track. After course walk, we went straight into practice, and typically the pilots have an agreement that Heat 2 won't watch the first Heat's FPV feeds during practice, and that's just so they can all go out cold and see the track for the first time under the goggles. But in Miami, Heat 2 realized they never mentioned the agreement this time, and getting a sneak peek was fair game, and then it became quickly evident just how bad these guys wanted some points. Oh, this just looks pretty oh, good. Those are huge. That was, that was Gab, I think. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's good. Ooh, that is kind of close to the... Uh... Yeah. Now, time trials and ranking rounds were something I had never really learned about until they were, like, unfolding. Like, time trials and ranking rounds only took place on day one, and then they were used to seed the semis of race 11, but then races 12 and 13 were seeded by the finishing order of the previous race. Now, time trials consist of two packs, staggered start, and the only goal is to set your best time. Your best heat time seeds you into your ranking round, and then ranking rounds are heads up racing, just like we were used to watching, and the pilots get four heats in their groups to get as many points as they can, and those points will then seed you into semifinals. Then once semis start, everyone is in full competition mode and knows it's do or die time. Oh, let's be honest, I'm telling you that Halo right now, I know he is not religious, but I can't he's over there. Please, God. But here's the deal. Here's Which the deal. is like the complete wrong wait, wait. thing. To... We, we need... Oh, oh, one now. Alex has got a lot of speed. Oh, Alex. They're too close. Come on, Alex. It's gone. Singu, look at I want to point out Singu's in second. He is. Oh, Keep it together. Oh, Oh man, he got worked in the slalom. There we go. That's the Min Chan that I know. This is the sketchy gate. Oh man, Alex! Oh, Alex! Let's go! Oh. Yeah. 
Then comes my least favorite part of every race, sitting in the pits with all the pilots that didn't make it to finals. Now, there's not a smile to be found, and they're all just sitting there playing back their mistakes in their heads, and this is usually a good time to go grab a bottle of water or stretch my legs, but sometimes I take it as an opportunity to ask some questions. Can you summarize what happened in your semis for me? Is this a camera or a mic? That's a mic, the camera's Look over into there. Look it. Oh, oh camera's over there. Could've gotten. Hey, guys, <laughs> yeah. how you doing? So today I just wasn't locked in, you know, everyone has their days, felt super good in qualifying yesterday, but didn't carry in the momentum today, so we'll just reset, it's a new day, new race, so just gotta lock in, put the past in the past and put the present in the present, so here we go. Then I came to my last realization of the event, and that was that not making finals is huge at multi-day races. These pilots are racing the same track for three days, and when a pilot doesn't make finals, they aren't only missing out on points, they're also missing out on track time. The six pilots that make it to finals get six or more packs on the track, and then this quickly becomes a tell of the days to come. How much is it in like the back of your head that they're about to get seven more packs possibly than you are and we're going straight back into it? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it, so I might as well not let it affect my mental. Um, I mean, the reality of it is that they're going to be a little more warmed up, but I mean, it's another hurdle that you're going to have to overcome if you want to win, so you got to do so and we're going to go out there and do so. After all was said and done, I think it's safe to say that every pilot was just happy to be a part of what was easily the greatest drone race of all time crowd, the energy, never did I think that I would see this many fans cheering for the sport I love. And you could feel their emotions, like every pilot had its group of fans and you could hear their cheers and their tears because not only was this a terrifically run event, it was also the best racing I've seen from this group of pilots. It was a constant battle and everyone was giving everything they had all the way to the finish gate. I can't say it enough, but I just felt blessed to have the opportunity to be a part of this. I had the best seats in the house for what was the biggest drone race in history, and at the end of it, I even felt like a winner.